Greetings and welcome to Christmas here at St. Bernard's in Homer Glen. I'm Father Joe McCormick, pastor of St. Bernard's, and on behalf of the Augustinian friars who serve St. Bernard's as well as the wonderful parish staff, I offer all of you a very blessed and Merry Christmas. Certainly this Christmas is different for us all this year and very difficult for many. And so I know many of you cannot join us in person for mass uh, in church on Christmas. And so uh, for that reason, we've made an, uh, kind of a special effort to prepare this very nice uh, video presentation of our Christmas mass. And as you view it, you certainly can join your prayers uh, with ours as we give praise to God for this great feast. Even in the midst of the darkness of this pandemic, we can celebrate with joy and a sense of peace, Emmanuel, God with us. May the peace and joy that flows from your faith in that mystery be with you always. God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, as we stand before this Christmas crib and celebrate the feast of the birth of the Holy Child, call forth the childlike innocence and love that is within each of us. Cause us to wonder and rejoice again in this most ancient feast. With the shepherds, we come to the birth of Christ, seeking a simple celebration where the greatest gift will be ourselves given to you, our God, and to each other. May the star of Bethlehem, which shone so brightly over the birthplace of Christ, stand guard over our church and our families and all who gather this season, filling them in all the earth with light and peace. O oh Lord, bless this nativity scene and our Christmas celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus, be with all of you. 
We begin our Christmas liturgy by first remembering our need for God, for God to come to us anew with his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the word made flesh and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Prince of Peace and King of the universe. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We praise God with our hymn of glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith which illumines our minds may also shine through in our deeds. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, 
Every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those of whom his favors rest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over the 40 plus years that I've been ordained a priest, I frequently get a question from po folks asking about my vocation to the priesthood. And I guess I'm one of those unusual people that uh, was attracted to the priesthood way back when I was just a child. And that was, in fact, the case with many of the uh, boys in my Catholic grade school. But for me, the attraction to the vocation stuck. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do as a child but I wanted to be a priest. And I didn't know exactly what kind of priest. I knew our parish priests at the time, and I, I liked them, I enjoyed them very much. Um, but around, probably when I was in sixth grade, I started getting all this literature from the Divine Word Missionaries, the SVDs, as their abbreviation is. It must have been my sixth grade nun who turned in my name. But one thing I knew especially after reading material and learning about missionaries, I did not want to be a missionary to a foreign country. And of course, the Divine Word Missionaries had a pretty aggressive vocation recruitment program in those days, and they continued to send me a lot of their material. In fact, I think I was getting it uh, even right up to when I was ordained an Augustinian priest. And one of the reasons I joined the Augustinians was in fact at that time, I learned that among the various ministries they had, they did not have missionaries. And so I figured, that's safe. In fact, since I've joined the Augustinians, we do have missionaries uh, from our Midwest province in South America, and uh, Augustinians throughout the world have missionaries in many other uh, underserved parts of our country. But, but maybe it's because of that that I've always been very much in awe of missionaries who are willing to, to give up the comforts of their life here in the States and go to some foreign land, some strange culture, oftentimes living in great poverty and certainly in very different surroundings. And maybe because of my awe in missionaries, uh, I found myself really attracted to a story I read just recently about a particular missionary from Europe way back in the late 1700s. He volunteered to go sail across the ocean to the West Indies to work among the slaves, the African slaves in the West Indies. Now, this was, of course, a different era. 
It was a time when, in fact, the institution of slavery was accepted and even seen as important, if not necessary, for the commerce of the time. And this particular missionary, with great generosity, left his homeland in Europe, sailed across the ocean, and settled into an area in one of the islands where there were plantations with many African slaves. And his goal was to preach to them and to share the gospel with them and to see if any of them, in fact, would, become, would be baptized and become Christian. Well, he got nowhere. What he discovered when he got there was that the slaves were worked so hard that there was no time for anything else but work. Early in the morning, these black slaves would be carted out to the fields, and they would work hard all day and be carted back to their hovels late at night, sometimes getting only four or five hours of sleep, living in abject, abject poverty. And so this missionary was frustrated because after all, there was no time to spend with these slaves. And after all, he was white, like the slaveholders. And so what did he have to tell these slaves? Well, then he made a decision. He actually sold himself into slavery. He actually became a slave and began going out to the fields with these slaves, working hard all day long, side by side, oftentimes singing Christian hymns and offering aloud Christian prayers. He always looked out for his fellow slaves, but he too wore the shackles and lived in the abject poverty of the slaves, and they began to trust him. They began to see God in him. And in fact, many became believers. He became a slave for the slaves so that they might know God. On this feast of Christmas, we celebrate that great mystery of God not becoming a slave, but God setting aside his divinity in order to take on our humanity and the little babe born in Bethlehem. And that action, that birth, that mystery made all the difference in the world. This has been a difficult year. Certainly this is a difficult Christmas. There has been challenges and darkness physical ill health, emotional ill health, people out of work, people suffering boredom, depression, discouragement. And yet somehow we remember that God loved us enough, he was magnanimous enough, he was dedicated to us enough to get mixed up in the mess of our humanity. And in so doing, the Son has brought so many to God. The Son has, in fact, showed that despite the darkness, there's always light. In fact, sometimes we need darkness to see the stars. And so we do have great reason still to rejoice this Christmas as unusual as it is. And as much in awe as I am of that missionary who not only became a missionary, but then a slave, I'm in that much awe, that much more awe in the God who loved us enough to come and live with us in the hovels of our life. We have reason to rejoice and to give thanks to our God who is love. Amen. On this great feast, we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It is with renewed hope that we turn to our God, offering our prayers of concern and need. Our response during this Christmas season will be, Lord, hear us and bless us. For the church, that through what we say and do, we may continue to bear witness to Jesus' presence in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. For our leaders, that they may see the face of Jesus in the people who place their trust in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. That the birth we celebrate today may continue to lead to the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. That all of us in this Christian community may share in the joy of this blessed day and bring that joy to share with our families, friends, and all our loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. For all the sick, including the names in our bulletin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. For all those who have died, may they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. For all the intentions of our parish, and especially for Jean Wilson, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and bless us. O Lord our God, may the offering of this day's feast be pleasing to you, that through this most holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of Christ in whom our nature is united to you, Hear these, our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Sisters, brothers, all pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, may our offerings be worthy of the mysteries of the nativity this day, that just as Christ was born among us and also shone forth as God, so these earthly gifts may confer on us what is divine. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. O Lord, you are indeed holy, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And so, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on that night he was betrayed. He took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. And so, Lord, we do celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his coming again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy, this living sacrifice. O Lord, look upon the oblation of your church and see the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May Christ make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your saints, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Augustine, St. Bernard, all our patrons, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we do rely for unfailing help. Lord, may the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and all those who offer leadership and ministry among us, your people. Lord, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered together before you. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, To all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admission to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. With confidence now, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, deliver our families and loved ones from everything evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, when you were born, in Bethlehem, the angels sang, peace to God's people, peace to people of goodwill. Lord, look not on our sins and failings, but rather on our faith and devotion this Christmas, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our newborn King be with you always. We take time to offer each other a sign of Christ's own peace.
Sisters, brothers all, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Viewing this Mass from home, we now offer the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, grant us, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of this ministry and to love them evermore and more. We pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in the peace and joy of our newborn King. Thank you.